Hi, my name is Tom McGilvery, and I have the honor and the privilege of serving as the STS president. Since our annual meeting in January, the STS has been bolstering its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have engaged in many conversations with colleagues to hear their thoughts. We have reached out to other associations to learn about their DE&I practices. In addition, we have engaged an external DE&I consultant, Dr. James Poe, to work with us as we review and revisit our policies, procedures, and practices to ensure that the STS has an inclusive culture and structure that truly represents and supports our diverse group of surgeons. In addition to strengthening our internal organization and the specialty, the STS will be working to address healthcare disparities that impact the patients that we serve. Over the next few months, we plan to hold a virtual town hall for our members to weigh in with their own thoughts on these issues. We also will conduct a deep dive session with our board of directors because DE&I leadership starts at the top. We will also undertake a member survey to gather additional data to further understand the thoughts of our members. These activities will reaffirm our commitment to DE&I as a core institutional value of the STS. Dr. Pogue and I recently had an open and honest conversation about DE&I, the challenges and the opportunities facing the STS. I hope you will invest the next few minutes to watch this discussion. If you do, I am confident that you will find it time well spent. Thank you very much. Certainly, currently, DE&I is a um, political issue. It has always been, in my opinion, an important issue. In talking with a number of stakeholders uh, over the past couple of months on this specific issue, I've come to learn that many people define diversity, equity, and inclusion in, in different ways. Can, can you tell me what your goal, what, what, how you define diversity, equity, inclusion, and what goals we at the STS should be looking for? Yeah, so some, from, from a 100,000 foot view, DEI is how we treat each other. It's how we, how we welcome each other. It's how we belong to one another. And, and, and as we start to drill down, people have their different lenses on how they're going to articulate it, but I'll share this as well. Then we talk about diversity. I think diversity is everything about you and I that makes us similar or different. All of it matters. All of it counts. My favorite color of the car you drive, whether you were, you were raised in a city or you were raised on a farm or in the suburbs, it all matters. But I think we might also agree that some components of diversity are more impactful than other pieces of diversity. For example, every day of the week, my gender is more critical than my favorite color. Every day of the week, my, uh, my hair color is less important than my religious uh, predilections. So some components are more important than others. So we have to prioritize as we sort of move forward. Then we talk about inclusion. Inclusion is that feeling of belonging that exists in an organization that's driven by its leaders, that's driven by KPIs, is driven by policies, practices, and procedures. And yes, you can measure these things. So what we do is to make plain by baselining the language, this is what we think about diversity. This is what we think about inclusion. And then we build around that, as I mentioned before, this assessment that we try to execute for folks. So I'm, I'm hopeful that as, uh, as STS is looking forward and improving in this area, that you take the 100,000 foot view initially. How are we going to connect to one another, be more deeply connected from one another, learn from one another, teach one another, lead from one another, and follow one another? That 100,000 foot view. And then within the concepts of those slices, there will be some pieces that are more impactful and critical to us being able to accomplish those than others. And that's where we'll focus our work. It's interesting, Dr. Pogue, you know, in, in conversations, you know, there are many similarities and there are some differences. And, and we've heard from a number of different members and uh, that have different opinions, different values, different belief systems. 
uh, at one end of the spectrum, you know, we have been accused of being woke, you know, that we're caving into social media and, and that we're just uh, reacting to, to placate that uh, very loud uh, and very active um, social media. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that, you know, when we're, when we're having these conversations about the words of the day, we have to remember that yesterday there was a different word, and the day before that there was a different word, and tomorrow there'll be a new one. So what do we believe in? What are our values? What are our core values and beliefs? And let's focus on that, right? Let, 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 it, it, we can get distracted by the, the, by the bright, shiny light of the day, the bright, shiny word of the moment. And it can take us in directions that pit us against one another, when in fact our core beliefs and our core values are pretty well aligned. So I'd ask people for a piece of patience, for a little bit of grace, as we navigate through a very difficult, sticky subject for some of us. And I know and I recognize that for, for most, if not all of us, this is not just an STS issue. There might be some stuff that's happening in your neighborhood, at your school, at your hospital, in your family that is powering this or dampening this. Okay, I recognize all of that. It may be the case for many, if not all of us, but I'd ask us not to be distracted by the bright, shiny light of the moment. And then to remember that for the vast majority of us, probably we believe in the same 80% things. It's, it's the details where we can get distracted. If we're not careful, we'll end up being pitted against each other like rabid pit bulls when we believe in most of the same things. Well, I think that's right. And you know, this is an important issue, not only for the STS and our specialty, it's an important issue for our society. And it's on the, it's literally and figuratively on the front page of, uh, of what's happening every day. And, and, and my own personal opinion is it's important that we listen to each other, not just not just listen, but hear what people have to say. Because we, we, we have to come together on this. And if we don't, it's just going to push us further apart from each other. I, I think there's some wisdom in that. And, and, and there, in, that, in that listening and for us coming together, it doesn't mean that we all agree. It means that we just come together. We can come together and disagree. We're allowed to do that. You know, and, and, and I like your tone and, and, and attitude and sort of perspective. And I wonder, what, what do you hope to have accomplished on sort of the DEI front when the, your term of presidency comes to its sunset? Yeah, well, thanks for asking that question, Dr. Pogue. Uh, I can say that back when I finished, when I was in my training and finished my training, what really drew me to the STS, what I admired and respected the most about it, was that the STS was an inclusive organization. Every cardiothoracic surgeon, and now everyone who cares for cardiothoracic surgery patients, uh, are welcome to become a member. Every member is encouraged to participate in the work we do, and every member that's willing to commit the time and the effort to be engaged and help get the work done there's an opportunity for each and every one of us to rise in leadership in the organization. You know, I want our specialty to reflect our society. And I want our STS, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, to reflect our membership. It's important to the patients that we care for. You know, it's, it's a, you know, it is, a long-term view. Uh, I believe that's who we are. I believe that's who we want to be. And it's stated in our mission statement. You know, we, we are on the right path. And I think along that path, we have made progress and we certainly have stumbled. But just because we've stumbled doesn't mean that we have failed and we're not going to get to where we want to be. You know, it just needs to basically allow us to pick ourselves up and move all of us forward. So at the end of the year, when I'm done with this privilege of being the STS president, I want us to be closer to that goal line than we were when we started. And, 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 I, and I'm sure we'll get there. You know, the, this idea that it's a, a long-term initiative, that it may not all happen underneath your 
uh, cycle of leadership, I think is is the smart one because there's too many people in uh, hopefully yesterday's thinking that think it's a just uh, just add water and now it's fixed kind of a deal. Um, and sort of attached to that, or maybe the opposite of that is that there are also folks that believe this is just something you're doing because to make the organization look good, that it's about public relations, that it's about marketing and trying to repair reputation, but not about true change. How would you respond to that? Well, I, mean, I suspect, and I know that there are some people who think that. I, I hope that they don't really believe that because it's not true. Uh, you know, at the STS, we're not trying to manage a problem. We are trying to make progress. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, we have made progress. The STS has a long history and a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Over a decade ago, we created a task force uh, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Five years ago, we made it a workforce, uh, which th those are the, that's the engine, the, the workforces are the engines that, that power the STS. We've made a commitment to ensure that every workforce, every committee, every podium presentation, every panel that we have reflects our membership. And it reflects our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that includes the senior, the senior leadership, both the executive committee uh, and the board. To make these progress, to make this progress, to make real change, it requires a commitment and a resolve. And, it, and that starts at the president, me, and the board. But in order for it to be successful, it requires the commitment of every other leader and every member in the organization to help move this important, the, maybe the most important thing for our patients forward. No, I, I, I hear you. And I, and I, I think I would, I would add and maybe I put an and on there that the, the work when you talk about it requires every leader uh, to be engaged and involved. And we don't all have to agree with one another. Right. We just, we just have if progress. It gets us going to the part of the progress is going to happen is us beating up the ideas, you know, and, and making sure that the right idea and the right focus for us right now. No, and so I, I I think that that all is the, is the right thing, and I think that the the as, as STS moves and grows and goes through this progress, uh, and and it'll be bumpy, and it'll feel very bumpy for some people, and for some people it will feel absent. They may some folks may decide to even kind of check out a little bit, but that progress has to happen regardless as to whether or not I'm engaged or whether or not I want to stop it, and so I would I would just ask people to be involved to be engaged. If somebody asks you to participate on something, give it some serious thought, you know, and 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 the, the, in as graceful and respectful of a way as you can, get in there and, and express your ideas because you might have the brilliant idea of the moment. Well, you know, Dr. Pogue, you know, this, as I see it, this isn't sort of an abstract group of political parties kind of arguing ideology. You know, what we're talking about, you know, Cardiothoracic surgery is a small group of professionals. We're talking about not just our members, our colleagues, and our friends. Mm. We all come together. We all have a similar mission, which is to help take care of patients who have cardiothoracic diseases. And, and, and that's what we do every day. And that's what we need to continue to do, not just in taking care of our patients, but also taking care of ourselves. So this is you know, for, for those of our members who don't think this is important, uh, I, I hope that they would take a moment of quiet reflection and really think about it and think about how we can, as a specialty, a, a, a group of colleagues, a group of friends, tackle this issue, this problem, like we do the issues and the, the, the problems that affect our patients. And I think if we do that, we can make real progress and sustainable change. I, I'm with you on that. I, 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 I would add that there are times when, uh, when we're working with organizations and they would say something like, we have a diversity problem. And then when I ask them to unpack it, it's often less about they have a diversity problem because their profession is diverse. 
right? They may want one group to be more, one group to be less, or they may want to bounce out things out, but they have diversity. They often more are describing an inclusion problem. And so we, we start with the baselining of language. We're all speaking from the same sheet of music. And then if we can agree that perhaps the challenge is an inclusion problem, then we can line out what the better strategies are so that people can feel included. So that I, I love when you said our friends, it suggests that we care about each other. And, and in this work, the, 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 one of the critical pieces that I have to care about you, even if I've never met you before, I have to care about the work that you do, even if I don't have the capacity or the skill set to do it. I, I, there was a, uh, an organization, 3M, the 3M organization, they make products and they, they had this tagline in, in a, a while ago that said, um, we don't make a lot of the products that people buy. We make a lot of, of the products that people buy better. And that's, that's our work. I think that by helping people include one another, include their colleagues, include their peers, include their friends. It helps us to push toward the more inclusive organization and inclusive profession that, to your point, helps to service and, and help people become more healthy. But Bo, this is very exciting. Uh, it's going to be challenging, but I think it's going to be valuable. And I think it's going to be a catalyst for positive change, not only within the STS, but within our specialty as a whole. So I, I would like to, that's all the time we have uh, today. I want to thank you very much, Dr. Pogue, not only for joining us today, but working with us as we move forward to, to take on this among many of the other challenges that we have in cardiothoracic surgery and the STS. And to our members that are watching, I want to thank you, not only for being with us uh, for this uh, webcast, but also for helping us as we move forward. And, and just to to reinforce to everybody that we are committed and open to a transparent process. We welcome your thoughts and your ideas. So if you have anything to add or anything you'd like to contribute to this process, please feel free to reach out to me at any time or to any member, any leader of the, of the STS. So thanks very much. We look forward to working together.